Does it feel like your body is stuck at the exact same weight? Like no matter what you do, that number on the scale just will not budge? It might almost feel like your body is fighting against you. But I've got some news for you. It may not be that your body is fighting against you. Instead, your body and your weight are just settling where it's comfortable. So today we're going to talk about what is going on, why it is happening, and how you can learn to push your body out of that comfortable zone and get you to lose weight. Now, if you're here watching my videos, you likely have struggled with your weight for some time. It's probably been an emotional roller coaster of ups and downs, a pound here, a pound there. You've tried every diet, exercise, and maybe you've even been on the medications like Wagovi and Zepbound, but still haven't found an answer. That sounds pretty darn frustrating. And the reason that this is occurring is possibly due to what we call the settling point theory of obesity. So what exactly is the settling point theory? Well, you see, what makes up you is a whole complexity of biology, genetics, and various other factors and things that are ultimately outside of your control. Now, all of those factors and things then interact with the environment that's around you, so the amount of food or different types of foods that are available, the behaviors that you engage in, so this is gonna be things like your lifestyle factors, and ultimately, those together, when they mix and compile, are ultimately going to be where your body says, hey, this is a cool weight that we like to settle at when we're in this environment. You can almost think of your body kind of like a thermostat, right? When it finds that nice Goldilocks zone, it's not too hot, not too cold, it's just right, it will ultimately want to stay and settle at this weight based on the environmental conditions that are interacting with your biology and genetics. Now, many of you have probably heard of the set point theory of obesity, and the settling point theory is a little bit different. The set point theory says that there is a specific weight that your body is going to defend against. It is going to say, hey, we're at 200 pounds, we never want you to go below 200 pounds. We are going to constantly fight you with tooth and nail to keep you at that 200 pound mark, no matter what you do. Whereas the settling point theory allows for more flexibility and adjustment. It basically says that your weight can go up and down if we change the environmental and behavioral factors that are going on around you and how they're interacting with your genetics and biology. So the set point theory says there is no change, there's nothing you can do about it, it's gonna be a constant fight for the rest of your life. Whereas the settling point theory says that change is possible and you can get your body to settle at a lower weight. Now, before we get too far along here, we need to understand why our body would develop a settling point in the first place. And the reason for that is because of survival and evolution. You see, 30,000 years ago, food wasn't abundant. There wasn't a grocery store on every corner. We had to expend a lot more energy to go hunt and gather in order to get enough food so that we could survive. And so your body developed a very unique system to help with that survival in that when food was more abundant in the environment, it would get you to consume as much of it as possible so that your weight would increase and your weight would settle at a higher point. But when the environment was scarce of food and we had to do a lot of work to find food and that sort of thing, our weight would then settle at a lower point. So based on the environmental conditions and things that were going on, the weight would go up and down to match and meet those environmental conditions. The problem is that we now live in today's environment where food is no longer scarce. In fact, we have to do very little work in order to obtain our food. And overall, we've built our environment so we're substantially more sedentary. But because your body is so well advanced for living in a world that existed 30,000 years ago, because we spent a lot more time living in that kind of environment, your body got very good at living in an environment of scarcity, whereas now it's only been living in this modern environment for the last couple hundred of years. And thus, it's gonna be more primed that when the environment is plentiful, where there's an overabundance of food and we can decrease our activity, it's gonna push and cause our weight to settle out at a much higher point. Now, I know most of you that are watching this content are really enjoying my videos, but unfortunately, only 20% of you are actually subscribed to my channel. And I know you wanna keep getting a lot of really great information so that you can continue on your health journey and start learning how to sustainably lose weight and keep that weight off long-term. 
And so this channel is the place to be in order to do that. And therefore you need to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on your notifications so you never miss out when I put out another video and get some more amazing tips and tricks to help manage your health. Now, the reason why I wanted to make this video and talk about the settling point theory is because it allows us to understand that one, our body is very complex and that complexity then interacts with a very complex environment and causes a whole cluster F of things that make managing our weight extremely difficult and largely out of our control. And so I hope this helps you to kind of see that one, you're not inherently broken. There's not something that is wrong with you. It's not that you don't have enough willpower. It's that you're fighting the environment and your biology. But coming at this with that understanding of that your body can settle out at a new weight and not set at some particular weight and never going to change from that, that means we can work towards making small tweaks and changes in our environment and in our lifestyle behaviors to get our body to settle at a lower point. And some of those things may even include adding in tools like Wagovi and Zepbound. But outside of the medications, there are three things that you can look at and focus on. Number one is take a look at your environment. Is your environment conducive to helping you to achieve what you are looking to achieve in terms of your weight and health? What are the foods that you currently have on your counter? What are the foods that are currently in your fridge? Are you taking your lunch to work with you or are you buying a lunch every single day? What we wanna start doing is looking at how we can tweak our environment so that we have more fruits and veggies readily available. That might mean putting a fruit bowl on the counter or putting more fruits and veggies at eye level in the fridge. It might mean removing foods that tend to be more trigger foods or foods that we can easily overeat on out of our life. And it might be things like packing your lunch or structuring your day so that you can get a better night's sleep and you're not waking up late and are able to have breakfast and you're not having all kinds of weird cravings throughout the day and so on and so forth. It's all about making small tweaks and changes to your environment that are going to help to move you in the direction you want to go. The next thing is looking at how you can add in more movement. A lot of people tend to think, well, I need to do at least a 30 minute workout or an hour workout or it's just not worth it. But the reality is, is we just need to add in some small little tweaks and changes. And so again, look around at your environment and see where can we just add a few more steps here and there. That might be parking further away from the entrance of wherever it is that you're going. That might be taking the stairs instead of the elevator or taking the elevator up a couple of flights and then getting off and going up the stairs. It's gonna be a number of different things like that that are gonna help you to just get slightly more activity in and you can build on that over time as you get used to it and start to make it more of a regular pattern. And all of that will add up and ultimately lead to success and moving again in the direction you wanna go. The next thing we really need to focus on is changing your mindset and perspective. You see, many people tend to hyperfixate on that little glowing number that shows up on the scale. The problem with that number is that you have zero control on it. You can't tell me before you step on the scale today the exact number that scale will read out before you step on it. Yes, you might be able to estimate or whatever, but you can't tell me the exact number because you can't control it. And so the wind might blow and suddenly you step on the scale and you're up four pounds. There's no rhyme, no reason. Your body is just holding some extra water and that's just what it's gonna do. But if you are hyper fixating on that number, that number going up is going to ruin your day. Instead, you should be saying, well, that damn wind blew again and my number went up. And so we'll check again tomorrow, but that is no reason for me to derail and ruin all of the great changes and things that I'm making and moving in the direction that I wanna go. Now, another part of this mindset shift is instead of focusing on that number, is focusing on how you're feeling. Are you feeling stronger? Are you feeling healthier? Are you able to walk further than you were before? Are you able to climb a flight of stairs without getting out of breath? Are you lifting more weight at the gym? Look at the other wins that are outside of that scale, the non-scale victories, and because those are really what is actually important. Those are the things that tell me how healthy you are, whereas that number on the scale tells me sweet fuck all. Now, just to kind of address a few other myths that I sometimes hear come up, number one is that if I get on one of these medications like Wagovi and Zepbound, 
it's just going to take care of everything for me and I don't need to focus on my lifestyle changes and the other factors and things that are in my environment. Well, that's just not the case. The reality is, is that these medications work best in conjunction with changing your environment, with changing your lifestyle, and are actually fundamental to actually help improve your overall health. The next thing that a lot of people ultimately do is they drastically cut their calories which, of course, will then lead to a whole bunch of hunger and them then binging and overeating at a later point in time. So instead of trying to eat drastically less, why don't we focus more on trying to eat well? Eat more balanced meals that have plenty of protein, plenty of fruits and veggies, all of the good whole foods that we know are great for our overall health and are going to make us feel a whole lot better. And we have a whole mountain of data that when people are given the opportunity to eat whole foods ad libdum, which means that they can just eat as much as they would like, ultimately they lose weight because it's very hard to eat a lot of calories from good whole quality foods. And hey, if you're interested in learning more about how your body is settling out at a current weight, and maybe you need some support to kind of identify the things in your environment that need to be changed and tweaked, well, then you should definitely go down below to my links and book an appointment with me to either do a one-on-one, -on -one, one-off consultation where we can kind of go through a few things, talk about what some of the issues and problems are, and I can help and support you along the way, or you can shoot me an email and we can talk about more intensive coaching options that are going to help you to be as successful as possible in managing your weight not only today, but forever as well. So head down below, all the links are there, check them out and don't miss out. Now, the next roadblock that a lot of people will come across, especially as they're just starting out on this journey, is this belief that that number on the scale still needs to be dropping extremely quickly. They need to be losing two, three, four, five pounds a week, and if they're not losing that amount, well then, what is the point? The thing you need to realize is that slow and steady is ultimately what is going to win this race. Losing anywhere from a half to two pounds per week is a great goal to initially go with. But you need to understand that some weeks, there's not going to be any change in weight. Some weeks, you might even have a slight bump in your weight. The goal is to focus on being healthier and stronger and engaging in the positive behaviors that are moving you to be healthier and stronger and not just focusing on what that number on the scale says. I mean, let's be real here. Anytime you've seen that number on the scale go up, you tend to self-sabotage, which then leads you to overeating, binging, not working out, skipping everything, and waiting for the diet to start on Monday, instead of saying, hey, the scale went up, well, that kind of sucks. What do I need to tweak and change? Is there something I can do about it? Or again, did the wind blow and there's absolutely nothing I can do and we'll check again tomorrow. Do you see what I'm saying? It's really all about changing and shifting that mindset as well. And I'm here to tell you that you are so much more than just a number on the scale. So that is it, and that is all my friends. You are not broken, there's not something inherently wrong with you. Your body is just settling at its comfort zone. And so we need to kick your body out of its comfort zone in order to lose weight, but we also need to look and try to find another comfort zone that settles us at a lower weight. And that requires you to look at your environment and how your biology and genetics is interacting with that environment and seeing what are the changes and tweaks that you can make and ultimately, most importantly actually, what are the tweaks and changes that you can make that are going to be sustainable for you to reach a new comfort zone and settle out at a new lower weight. You are ultimately the captain of this ship and there's certainly going to be some strong currents and some strong waves ahead of you but if you continue in the right direction, things will get calmer and you will find that new place to settle out at. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And of course, if you did, please go ahead and share it with anybody else that you think might enjoy it. As well, if you haven't already done so, be sure to mash that subscribe button so that you can make sure you're staying up to date with all of my content and the amazing stuff that I put out. As well, you can help me feel really good about myself as I see that subscriber number keep going up. As well, don't forget to check me out on my other social media channels and also check out all of my links down below. I have a number of different things that are going on there, everything from my email newsletter to the links to my Amazon store where you can buy the various products that I recommend to manage side effects with medications as well as other products and such that can help you to start changing your lifestyle and start changing your mindset when it comes to your weight. And as I always like to sign off, please remember that it's those small tweaks that are going to lead to the massive peaks.